Welcome to my channel General Hospital, where you can get news about. For more information, kindly subscribe and follow, and I am your buddy. Now let's get started. Carly refuses to believe Jason tried to kill Dante, and Sunny tells Sam her ex is alive. Today on General Hospital, Finn discovers the vape Jake took from Danny. Sam makes a request of Sunny, and Jason continues to avoid capture. Dustin Cushman. At Carly's, she tells Anna and John they have to wait outside for her lawyer to arrive and look at their search warrant. Anna says it's obvious Jason is here and she is giving him a head start, so stay out of their way or get arrested. Carly says they can search as he's not here, and Anna again tells her to stay out of their way. Hashtag FBF roll call. Crack open a photo album of your daytime favorites in the parts they played on their way to soak stardom. Carly calls Diane for help, while John and Anna find nothing. Anna questions Carly and asks where her cars are. Carly says she has two cars and they are in the garage, and she has nothing else to give Jason as he wasn't here. Anna says that means he's on foot and injured. Carly asks what is going on, and why is Jason hurt? John says Jason tried to murder Sonny and shot Dante earlier this evening. Carly says that is insane, Jason would never, and Anna knows it. John asks Anna where Jason may go. She knows one place and they take off. Maxie and Spinelli have been out driving in her car looking for Jason at Sonny's various safe houses. After getting back in her car and not having found Jason, Maxie's car doesn't start, and Spinelli wonders what is going on. She says her car is out of gas, and she was distracted by what has been going on she didn't notice she was getting low. Spinelli still doesn't understand what was going on in the footage. She asks if he's having second thoughts about helping her instead of Jason with the cops, but he isn't. Spinelli, however, does feel guilty that the FBI knows about Jason because of him. Maxie says whatever happens next is on Jason, and he won't give up without a fight, and neither will they. He thanks her for working with him on this, especially after his subterfuge. She knows his heart was in the right place. He says his heart is with her, takes her hand, and they kiss. Spinelli says, all is well that ends well. Maxie replies, yeah, so when can you move out? Israeli hostage to stir on a public speech about the hostage crisis. At the hospital, Jordan hides out in TJ's office to give Dante's family some space. T says Dante is Christina's brother, and she came here to be with the family, and their child is going to be biologically tied to Sonny. He knows Sonny was shot at tonight and a few weeks ago, and he's been afraid of this. Jordan asks if he told Molly any of this. He hasn't and agreed to go through with the surrogacy with Christina. Molly has been all in with Christina, but he's struggling. He asks if this is their life now. Someone else gets shot, and they all hold their breath waiting to find out if they pull through. It's not fair to him, Molly or their child. Jordan understands. However, she says no one is more motivated to make sure this works out than Christina. She tells him that he can't control everything, and all he can do is hope for the best, otherwise he'll be paralyzed. Jager admits that's how he feels when the anxiety creeps in. Jordan says he's still processing the last surrogate's miscarriage, but now the odds are in her favor. She tells TJ she loves him, and she can't wait to meet her grandchild and see the kind of dad he will be. He hopes to be a good one, she has no doubt about that. Liz finds Danny wandering the halls and asks why he's out so late. Danny admits he snuck out of the quarter mains to check on Dante. Liz suggests they go talk to his mom, but he thinks she'll be mad. Liz says she won't. Sasha finds Cody in the halls, rushes into his arms, and says she was so worried about him. She's been trying to get a hold of him, but he says his phone must have been off. She tells him he should have called her for support, but he didn't because he knew she'd come. She is puzzled, but he says they only just started talking about hanging out, and hanging out in the hospital wasn't really what he thought they had in mind. Sasha says they are friends, and she cares about him, and she'll always be there when he needs her. He understands and thanks her. She asks why he isn't with Dante's family. He didn't want to intrude. She says he's Dante's oldest friend and they could use his support. He feels they have each other, but she asks who he has. He is used to going it alone, but Sasha feels that needs to change. She says a lot of people care about him, and she is one of them. Cody decides to get them coffee and even knows her order, which surprises her. He tells her he notices things. Liz and Danny approached Sunny, Sam, and Alexis. Sam is initially upset that Danny snuck out again. But Liz explains he's worried about Dante. Liz heads out and Sam tells Danny he should go home and come back tomorrow. Danny insists he stays, so Alexis says she'll stay with Danny and take him home later. Alexis and Danny hit up a vending machine, and Sonny and Sam sit down and talk. 
Sunny doesn't understand why Dante went after that guy. Sam says it's his job. She has come to accept the risks of Dante's job and is at peace with it, but she wants the person who did this to have no peace. Sunny understands how she is feeling. Sam says she may look calm and collected, but she is a mess, and she needs to know there will be payback. She asks if he understands what she's asking him to do. He understands. She thanks him and decides to go sit with Dante. Sunny gets a message from Carly to meet on the hospital roof. He heads up to the roof, and she says something happened tonight that he needs to know about. He realizes she saw Jason, and Carly asks how he knows about Jason. He explains he was on the roof of Selena's warehouse with some other guy who tried to kill him tonight. Carly says Jason would never shoot him, but Sonny says he doesn't know that. But he knows Jason was on the roof and then Dante got shot soon after. Carly doesn't believe Jason would shoot Dante. Sonny asks what he said to her, but Carly says they didn't have time to talk. She fills him in on what happened and that he was shot. Sonny asks if he told her who shot him and she says he didn't. Sonny says it could have been Dante and Jason could have shot him back. Sonny knows Jason is an expert shot who never misses. Sonny returns to Dante's room and talks with Sam in the hall. He says there is something she should know. A suspect has been identified in the shootings. She asks who it is. He tells her it's Jason, and he's alive. Back on the roof, Carly hopes wherever Jason is that he's okay. Alexis and Danny talk about how hard it is to wait. Alexis says Danny is a little like her, and when they see an injustice, they want to make it right. Alexis feels that is why he should go to the quarter mains, because Scout will lead him when she wakes up. He agrees to go back, so they depart. John and Anna surround Jason on the footbridge, and Anna begs him to let her take him into custody, and they'll sort this all out. Suddenly Jason jumps over the bridge, leaving John swearing. Anna sends her officers off to search for Jason, and John asks why Jason would come here. She explains Jason has this bridge rebuilt, and he and Robin used to meet out here. Anna assumes there is a structure nearby he was planning to hide out in. John says, now he's in the river, and probably dead. Anna tells him never to assume, and that Jason jumped thinking he could survive the fall. John says it's better to jump than be charged with killing a cop. Wet and in pain, Jason makes his way to the quarter main boathouse and passes out. At Liz's place, Finn stops by and Jake tells him that his mom is running late. Jake invites him in to wait, and Finn makes small talk. Finn finds a vape on the floor and asks if it is his. Jake swears it's not his. It's someone from school, and he took it from the person who has been using it a lot. Finn lectures him on the dangers of vaping and asks how his friend reacted to him taking it. Jake says he wasn't happy. Finn sees he's worried. Jake doesn't want him to get in trouble, but he doesn't know how to get him to stop. Plus, he'll probably just get another one. Finn says he can tell his friend he doesn't like him using it, and he'll remember those words. Finn says if he needs to talk about this some more, then he's around. Jake asks if Finn's going to tell his mom. Finn thinks she needs to know, but it should come from him. Liz finally comes home and sees something is clearly wrong based on the looks on their face. Jake shows the vague to his mom and explains he took it from a friend. Liz believes him and is sorry he's worried about his friend. He says he talked to Finn and he gave him some good advice. Liz says they are lucky to have Finn and she hates seeing more and more kids with these. This is a bigger conversation and they'll talk about it in the morning. Jake heads up to his room and Liz is so relieved the vape is not his. Finn hopes he didn't overstep with her son. Liz thinks he did the right thing, and Jake is warming up to him in a way he hasn't before. Liz asks if there was an issue with Violet, would he mind her stepping in? Finn says she has three kids of her own, does she want another? Liz loves Violet and the girl energy she brings into her life, and their families are meshing. Finn admits Aiden came to him for advice on someone he likes named Hobius. Liz is surprised, and Finn hopes she knows about her son and that he didn't betray Aiden's trust. Liz says she did know, and he confided in her over Christmas, but wasn't ready to tell anyone else. Finn says he must be now, and no big deal, right? Liz says...